Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, welcoming you to Ham Radio Answers number 148. Our subject for today is the MFJ1708 SDR, a transmit receive switch that allows you to use your software defined radio, or SDR, in conjunction with your station transceiver. MFJ gave this to me at the Dayton Hamvention. Smaller SDR receivers, whether of the dongle type or fancier, such as the SDR Play series, have one thing in common. They all have software that creates a spectrum display and waterfall of the band of interest in your computer. SDR receivers, such as the SDR Play RSP1A, provide a magnificent spectrum display of an entire amateur band at the time. It used to be that if you had a mid to high end radio, you could order an expensive pan adapter and display the spectrum on a computer monitor. Now, the much less expensive SDR receivers can fulfill that purpose with an outstanding spectral display coupled with a waterfall. It would be very nice to run the SDR based pan adapter at the same time you're running your radio. If you connect your antenna both to the radio and the SDR, the SDR can give a very nice display. The problem, of course, comes on transmit. You need a way to disconnect the SDR from the antenna whenever you're going to transmit so that you don't destroy the SDR's front end. Some mid to high level transceivers offer an output to the SDR for exactly this purpose, but many other radios have no provision for it. So MFJ has come up with a solution, the MFJ1708 SDR. This little box has some neat tricks in store. Now, let me mention that MFJ sells two versions of this. The original, which is the one I'm holding, and then a B model, which costs more and is more sophisticated. Let's take a look at the original and see how it works. Here's what you find in the box. A cable with an RCA plug on both ends. One end of this attaches to the port on the back of your radio that goes to ground when you go into transmit. Pretty much all radios have this. The port is used when you're using your radio with a linear amplifier. Now, the other end plugs into the push to talk connection on the 1708. The device itself you see here has three coax connections. One is for the radio. Next is for the antenna. By the way, these two are connected together inside. The third one is for your software defined radio. And during receive, this is connected to the antenna also. And then when you are transmitting, it's disconnected from the antenna. There's also a power cord in here. I've already gone ahead and put an Anderson power pole on mine. It comes with bare wires. And the other end has the standard little plug that you plug in for power on the front of the device up here in the corner. The little red light comes on when you have power. You can also use one of these wall warts like this, which is an MFJ1312E AC adapter, which works just fine. The device is not fussy about the voltage as long as there's enough to pull the relay in and out. I opened it up so you don't have to. On the front panel here, you see the power connection, the push to talk connection. Now, the delay is an adjustable delay for how long the device will keep the SDR muted after you stop transmitting. This is adjustable. You have connections to the radio, meaning your transceiver, an antenna connection, and the connection to the SDR. Looking inside at the top, you see a very simple circuit board using surface mount components. The black device on the right is the actual relay. Note that it is limited to one amp at 125 volts AC. That equates to 125 watts. So although the manual does not mention it, make sure this is placed at the output of your transceiver, not at the output of your linear amplifier. It's designed to be used with your normal 100 watt radio. Speaking of manuals, there is a slip of paper in the box that says your manual is online. It tells you to go online to get that manual. I downloaded the manual and found that it could have been printed on a single sheet of paper front and back. Let's look at the underside. 
we see that the radio and antenna are permanently connected together. Now we've also got the connection from the SDR over to the relay. There's going to be some capacitance in this circuitry, so there will be some leakage between the transceiver and the SDR, even when the SDR lead is grounded. We'll look at that. But first, let's look at some charts that explain how the device works. I've put inside the red box a block diagram level description of what goes on. The antenna comes into the antenna connection, the transceiver comes into the radio connection, and then the SDR at the SDR connection. Now, if there is no power applied, the SDR antenna lead is connected to the ground. So this is your fail-safe position when the power is off. If you use your transceiver during this period of time, then the SDR is safely grounded. So let's go to the next chart, which shows what happens when you apply 12 volts. The relay comes up to the upper terminal. So this is the receive case. The antenna goes straight through to the transceiver and is tapped and goes over into your SDR. Okay, so the coil is energized by 12 volt DC and the SDR is connected to the station antenna. The next two charts show the cases where the transceiver is transmitting. The first case is the case when you do not have the push to talk line connected. A sensor determines that the transceiver is transmitting by detecting RF and it will cause the relay to de-energize which will connect the SDR to ground. This protects the SDR during transmission. Now, here this is the case in which the transceiver signals with the push to talk line. When the push to talk line is grounded by the transceiver, the relay de-energizes so that it will be in a uh, grounded position for the SDR. So there are two cases here where the transceiver will cause the SDR input to be grounded. One if the MFJ1708 senses that the transceiver is transmitting and the case in which the push to talk line is grounded. The push to talk is a better idea because this causes the relay to de-energize at the same time that you're about to talk so you don't get an impulse of energy coming through as the transceiver starts to transmit. So if you can connect it that way, that's good, but it does have the capability to protect the SDR in the event that the transmitter starts putting out power. Now let's look at the case of sensing that the transmitter is transmitting. I had a question in my mind as to how much power it would take before the 1708 started to protect the SDR. So I connected the 1708 to the output of my signal generator as shown in the photograph. The signal generator went into the antenna input and I put a 50 ohm terminator in there on my signal generator output. Then I connected the radio output to my oscilloscope to see at what power level this would cause the SDR input to go low. The signal generator output is shown as the yellow trace on the oscilloscope. Then I connected the SDR output to the blue trace in my oscilloscope. Let's look at what we get out of this test setup. Here's a picture of the screen on the signal generator. The output is a sine wave at 7 megahertz and got up to 4 volts peak to peak before the relay dropped out. Okay, 4 volt peak to peak is 1.414 volts RMS. At 50 ohms, that's 40 milliwatts. So that's not actually very much power right there. So here's what the oscilloscope looks like. The SDR remains connected and so it gets the same signal there. Now because of the terminator, the voltages are cut in half here you see that the volts peak to peak is about 2.2. So half of the energy is in the terminator because it's 50 ohms and the other half shows up on the scope. Now let's take the case where the signal generator output is raised to 5 volts peak to peak. Here we see that the SDR radio is now cut off but the transceiver is attached to the antenna and works just fine. So what this means is that if you are using the RF sensing circuit to protect your SDR radio, it could see up to 40 milliwatts of power before the protection circuit kicks in. Okay, let's switch gears. Now, what you see is the SDR display connected via the 1708. 
I have my main station transceiver connected via the 1708 to my station vertical antenna. I'm going to do two different things. First, let's look at the case where we use the push to talk line. Okay, we're peaking up here around 40 to 45 to 50 dBm, so there is some coupling capacitance in the 1708 and some signal leaks through even when the relay is de-energized and grounded. Now we're looking at the case where we're using the RF sensor built into the 1708. We get around the same leakage. It looks like it's peaking up around minus 40 dBm. So how much separation is that? My transmitter was peaking at 100 watts output. 1 watt is positive 30 dBm, 10 watts is positive 40 dBm, and 100 watts is positive 50 dBm. These are all in decibels reference to a milliwatt. So if my signal is peaking in the SDR at minus 40 dBm, that's 90 dB of attenuation, and that's pretty good. Now, I mentioned at the very beginning that there is a B model of this device. MFJ is selling both the original model and the B model simultaneously. The one shown in the advertisement is the B model. It gives some isolation figures. My testing shows that the original model does pretty good at isolating the SDR from the transceiver. The B model says it's an improvement. It has a phrase in here about keying the linear amplifier. Be sure to put this device at the output of your transceiver and not at the output of your amplifier. Note that the B model also allows you to isolate the SDR and yet leave the relay contacts open, providing you with additional flexibility. In addition, there is an S model in which the connection to the SDR receiver is an SMA connector. The original sells for $80, the new B model sells for $100, and the S model sells for $105. You can order straight from MFJ or from any of MFJ's many dealers, such as Ham Radio Outlet or DX Engineering. So, do I recommend this device? Yes, I do. It seems to be quite effective. Now, my station radio, which is a Yaesu FTDX3000, already provides an output to my SDR that is switched when I transmit. In other words, my radio has the same capability built in as is provided by the 1708. However, my previous transceiver, a Tentag Jupiter, did not have that capability, so I will save this box for use with that transceiver. Looks like a good deal to me and allows you to use your SDR radio and computer as a pan adapter while you operate. In channel news, I've been working with our Ask Dave editor, Trevor Oman, and we now have several videos in which we answer your questions. You can send questions to hamradioanswers at gmail.com or you can use the form at www.dcastler.com slash ask hyphen Dave. Please be sure to subscribe and then click on the bell so that you get instant notification anytime a new video comes out or I go live. Also, please click on like and share this video with friends. You can find the tip jar at www.dcastler.com slash tip hyphen jar. Thank you for making this a viewer supported channel. I'm delighted to report that the channel now has 37,000 subscribers. That means 37,000 Augies worldwide. I try to review comments on YouTube several times a week and will reply where I can. I love interacting with all you Augies. Until we next meet, 73.